got the U250 and we're doing a master kit with pistons and steels and it pretty much means it includes everything we got all our pistons all our clutches all of our steels and our rebuild kit of course the filter and pump bushing and zip kit for the valve body which there's a separate video for the zip kit so you can watch that uh, and we'll get going on this one and I've gotten questions before on the uh, difference between the uh, 240 and the 140 and the 250 and the 150 the difference is going to be the size of these two clutches right here on the 250s I believe they are larger and the 150s are smaller the same vice versa for the 240s and the 140s and I'll show you the difference on the case how you can tell whether you're dealing with uh, at least from the outside if you're dealing with a, a two, 150 or 250 and a 140 or a 240 there's a difference on the outside of the case that you can see now the real way to tell what tranny you have is to look on the door jam of your vehicle and it will list what tranny is supposed to be in there that doesn't mean that somebody hadn't swapped it out at some time and if you have really really weird problems that you can't fix and you might want to go trying to find out if you got the right tranny in the right vehicle all right we're going to go ahead and build the drums first and we'll go on to the unit Pistons for the right drum. Now, I zip tie mine together so this so it's quicker for me to identify everything. I mean, I can figure it out, but I don't want to have to spend the time to try to figure stuff out. I, I got to keep going. Everything around here is about speed. So anything I can do to save time, it gets done. Our springs are going to fit up inside of these notches here. We're going to put our snap ring in taper of our tips is going to be up. We're going to put the opening of the tips inside of here. Let's see if we can find one that's uh, really pronounced. This is what I'm talking about. If you look at the tips of these snap rings, you see how the taper is shorter up here than down here. We want that short end up, taper up. All right, so our opening's over here. We want the snap ring inside of this raised up area right here all the way around because that's what holds it in. All right, we got our steels here. These are our clutches. pressure plate. Our snap ring has gotten really hot so we're going to stretch it back out just a little bit. Get a little more tension on it. It's pretty good for our clearance there. We've got a ceiling ring that goes right here. opening to be just like that, like that, like that, 
and I just take it and I give it a little bit of tweak. It helps keep it in the groove. You can also put some grease on there if you want to to help keep it in the groove. Pack the groove full of grease and then put it together. not going to get this piston in the kit and I did not and they didn't even give me the courtesy of a note this time now most of these o-rings come in packages like this this o-ring here is going to be sitting out loose inside your kit. piston spring cage is going to sit with this down there again we want our springs inside this area press this down we want the opening of our tips over in this area not in these notches taper the tip up again cushion plate we got these steels here and these are clutches now these clutches here are burnt but more than likely it's from the valves that we found inside the valve body is the way they were but if you take this unit apart and this set of clutches right here looks like this and most of the rest of them don't you probably got a bad computer and it usually happens in the rav fours more than anything else but it does happen in the others so if you got a really wiped out set of clutches right here, you have a run a really good chance of it being a bad computer. So once you get this thing totally rebuilt and you're going to go to test drive this thing, you need to be very mindful of what's going to happen. If you go out and you drive this thing and it shifts one, two, and it starts to go in the third gear and it feels like it's binding up immediately pull that shifter back down into low gear and turn around and come back and put a computer in it because if you drive it 
even just around the block, you will wipe these set of clutches out. And got another O-ring in here. here and we got this return screen here again we want them up in there taper of our tips up again. Taper of the tips I always go up except for on very rare occasions. And you want the tape uh, opening inside that right there. It's the only set of clutches that really wasn't burnt too bad. I'm gonna save these skills for different unit but uh, we'll put new ones in here since we got them extra o-ring just throw it away is there a return spring for that is our second brake center support
turn spring. Our snap ring, taper up. We're going to start right here on one of these notches right here. We're going to push this down and pop that in the groove there. That's going to help hold it in and we're just going to work our way around. got a lip inside here so the bushing has to go out that direction. See the lip down inside there? It's going to keep us from going too far down. There's an opening on this bushing where it's put together, that seam right there. We're going to put that seam anywhere but this notch right here. And to seal. You want to make sure and drive it down past flush. So what I do is I just knock it in. Put my hammer kind of at an angle and it knocks it down enough. You can also press it in with a pushing driver if you want to. Notches and notches the dimples on the outer gear go up, and on the inner gear, they go down. Of course, you're only going to be able to line it up one way, but our ports go together. Dirty torques. Well, we got to do our end cover. We should have already done that.
All right, these are butt cut seals, and they go together just together like that. You can also put grease in there on these grooves to hold them in there. Got an o-ring here. There is no pump seal that goes between the case and this pump right here. It's just just like that. Okay. Alright, these are plastic rings. These are what you're gonna get in the kit. I don't reuse these. Um, a buddy of mine turned me on to this upgrade. Actually, it was at one of the seminars too, I believe. And uh, anyway, been doing this. He started. Uh, he said that he doesn't do the solid rings anymore. He does the scarf cut uh, 4L60 blue ceiling rings that come for the 700, and they've been working fine. I have not done that yet, so this is a 4L60 E tool. If you do not have the tool, it's not that big of a deal. It makes it a little bit harder. So that's as far down as it's going to go, which is fine. So get the solid. solid 4L60 reverse input drum seals and you can put them down on the grooves and we'll get that down into the groove and straightened up and kind of just mash it around trying to reform it down as small as you can so we want to make sure it's going into that groove line it up as much as you can And I used to use a hose clamp to resize each one. And now I do it a different way. It seems to work much better as far as getting this in. Because this is going to be very difficult to get in without screwing these up. But once it it's in, it makes the training work so much better. just a pain to do. Alright. Now you take your resizing tool and it'll uh, get the top two pretty much where they need to be. Let that sit on there for a second. But the bottom one's not going to be right. And if this was a 140 or a 240, you're going to only have two ceiling rings there. And uh, the top one's going to be sized, but the bottom one's not. And it's only going to be somewhat close. It's not going to be all the way. What we're going to do is we're going to use the drum to get it. But we've got to get it to where we can get on there somewhat. Alright, so I got a, uh, I believe this is a C6 tailhousing bushing. And where the bushing's put together, I just cut the tabs off so it separates like this now. And I'm going to be able to spread this out, 
get it around there and I'm going to push it back down and I'm going to open my open my hose clamp up so it's easier to get around there and then we're going to tighten this down and we're going to let it sit for a few so you see how the top two are resized the bottom one is not at all then we spread this back open so we get around it then we're going to come in press this down get our hose clamp back on there and we're just going to tighten this down you got to make sure that ceiling rings going into the groove all the way otherwise it'll screw it up so the way I get mine <coughs> is I don't never change out the reverse input or the uh, input drum Teflon seals on those 4L60 700s I, uh, unless, unless they just don't fit right or they're melted or whatever then I do change them but as long as they fit snug in the bore I don't change them and I save all that stuff to do different things to different trannies so we're going to let this sit on there for a few minutes then we're going to take that off and we're going to put our drum on there immediately and we're going to leave our drum on there until we're ready to put it in the case and then right when we're ready to put it in the case we're going to have everything ready to go so that when we take this drum off of here we drop it in the case and we immediately put our end cover on don't give them rings time to expand that may have been enough time right there we shall see Uh, there's a bearing that goes on the back side there but uh, I don't think about that right now All right. see it's wanting to push it off you gotta go as straight as you can Size this a little bit more. Let it sit for a few more minutes. We're just going to do this until the drum will slide down on there without screwing those ceiling rings up. We're going to spin it around a few times, let it seat everything in there, and then we're just going to leave it. So what I'm going to do at this point is let this resize. I'm going to go prep the other two case halves. I'll probably already have this sitting on there by the time we come back. And... Uh, We'll start stuffing this in the case. Alright. Alright, I got our drum down inside here. We're going to let it sit there until we're ready for it. We put our low reverse piston in. lube on both sides and we 
go. Putting our piston or return spring in. Springs going in these holes. We got the taper of our tips going to be up. gonna work it into the groove we're gonna start on one side push this down pop it into the groove and just snap it in talked about welding our pinions on our planet. So this is what mine ended up looking like. Try not to weld in the center of the pinion there. There's a, that's an oiling groove right there. Oil goes down in there and runs down inside that pin. So you don't have to weld all the way around. You can if you want to. You just need to make sure that, that pin's not gonna move. And then grind it down so that um, it doesn't rub once it's all together. So this is what mine look like. And yes, I know I'm not a, a very good welder. I failed my welding test when I was in ag. So don't make fun of me. I'm not a welder. I'm a transmission rebuilder. So we're going to put our planet inside of our ring gear. We're going to stick it in, spline it into our transfer gear. There we go. Now I got this bolt off of a spring compressor for struts. That's, I use it for doing this. I got a socket that's going to fit inside the planet just to take up the space. And I got a two inch socket that's going to go on the front that it's going to go around the splines on that planet, allow it to seat in all the way. These happen to be 15 sixteenths. So I'm going to use a 15 sixteenths wrench and a ratchet with a socket. stays forward on that planet and doesn't fall behind it. check this and make sure we're in all the way we may have to re-situate this sometimes it doesn't go in on the first press it looks like it's in we'll give it a shot see what we got Keeper. This tab is going to go in that notch right there. And our nut is going to go with the taper down. And you got to be careful when you knock this planet out. Sometimes it'll mushroom this out. And then this nut doesn't want to start.
Alright, and we're going to want to tighten this up until one of these lines up. Bend that up in the tab. Make sure we're turning nice and free. And get this stuff put away. Alright. So we got this all in there. We're turning good. We put our low reverses in. You notice we got all these teeth here. We got four down here. Now the four are going to go right here. And you want to make sure that you got this like this and don't accidentally put this like this. Let's see if I got this right. Yeah, okay, you don't want to accidentally be one tooth off. If you are, um, you're not going to be able to get your final drive or your transfer gear in from the other side. So then we got these clutches. I'm just going to keep stacking. on me. this pressure plate we're going to put our center support in we want this feed hole facing the bottom you can uh, lube up the sides of the case if you want to help make this a little bit easier a lot of times when the planetaries blow up it's it's kind of hard to get it in there got this tapered snap ring it doesn't really specify in the book about where it goes but I always put the openings of my snap ring right over here in the 11 o'clock position the important part is going to be Making sure it's all the way into the groove. Right. And we got this bearing race lip down. This bearing is going to face with the bearing down. We got our sun gear we'll face with the dish up. And we got this race with the lip down. We got this washer on the back. This bearing. Yes, it down inside there. We're gonna pull up on this ring gear. We're gonna pop our snap ring in there. Make sure the opening is away from this wide slot here. You don't want it in any of this area. You want it totally encaged. And you're gonna get several washers in your kit. You're just gonna have to make sure which one fits where. This one's a two tab. You can put 
This one right here, some of them are three tabs. So we're gonna put that washer there. shell the wide or the deep grooves are going to face down we got our sprag assembly this is going to face up we want it free well and counterclockwise locking clockwise we'll set it on here these splines are going to have to spline into that right there we got This bearing faces this way. We got our shell. Depending on which washer that you have, this one takes a black one. It's a three tab. Our tabs are going in those little holes right there. Make sure it's all the way in. And our shell goes on. We got this washer, the lip down. We got our hub, this bearing is going to sit on here. We got this bearing, it's going to sit on here. This washer goes on our drum right here. like so. Alright, we need to have need to have our tubes ready. This uh, little tube is gonna go let's see you get this right quit screwing around that tube's gonna go that way this tube's gonna go that way we got our hold down bracket it's gonna sit right there millimeter hold down bolt for right there we got three of these flat rubber seals we're gonna go right here put the silicone on here have it all ready because like I said we don't want these ceiling rings to resize on us and expand on this <coughs> expand on this and make it harder to get in just have to be careful and not uh, smear silicone all over myself trying to get all this in Don't forget to air check your tubes and make sure that they're not cracked. Alright. Like I 
said, is a very tight fit. Take your drum, drop it in. Come on. Don't be jacking with me. Didn't put my upper clutches in. Dummy me. Getting way ahead of myself. And I screwed the pooch on this one. thinking about what I need to be thinking about instead of other things. Alright. I'm going to be smearing silicone all over myself. Put the opening over here. I'm going to put it up here because I don't want it in between and snapping the ends off of this. Alright, there we go. And we'll scoot this over. Scoot that over a little bit if we can. Get that fully in a tab. Alright, now maybe that's why my drum didn't want to drop. Ceiling rings haven't expanded too much already. And we're down. We'll put our bottom tube in. And our top tube. Get that lined up. Put our bolts in. bearing on and set this on just as straight as we can we may have already resized out too get this done before the silicone. Stick this in and put the. Like I said, sometimes this is really tough, but the result is worth it.
I don't know how much has been missed, probably all of it. Uh, race with the lip down. Uh, bearing. I just looked up and the camera wasn't recording, so I probably missed all of this. So This is probably a great waste of time. Bearing with the lip down. Our drum. Our bearing. And our differential. It'll sit in there just like so. Our pump. these brass looking bolts with the little dimples on it 12 millimeters two of these seals one here one here I'm gonna get our front case half and I forgot our race Got our shim and our race. Probably not going to matter. This video is probably not going to get made. There we go. for here. Here's the ceiling ring down inside there. You gotta change that. This bearing can sit just like that. This uh, race right here has no shim under it. time to go back and do anything. Alright, we got uh, two tins and they go right here and right here. And that's one way you can tell you got a 150 or a 250. They have 10 millimeter bolts out there. And then you got shorter bolts and you got longer bolts. All the long bolts go inside here and all the short ones go outside.
12 millimeters. tube the rubber is going to go down move that up a little bit we got another one of the flat ones that goes here we got this big one that goes right here and it's shaping up to be a very good birthday all right we got the spring goes in behind the check valve it goes There. Change the O-rings on our accumulators. Make sure they fit a little snug. You don't want them too loose. If they're fitting too loose, just go ahead and use the old ones. Usually don't have that problem with the to, uh, Transtech kits, it's the Toledo kits that have the problems. Uh, 548 74 and this goes in like this it's got a spring on top I've never seen one broken it doesn't come off uh, 2 inch 826 747 86 and then 
purple. Both of these are purple. 2 inch 900. 854, 102, 2 inch 416, 609, 177. Alright, manual valve's got to fit in right there. think I need to measure any of these. You got really long ones, you got medium ones, and you got short ones. The long ones go up here. Medium ones go here. 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 And then the short ones go in here and around the front. I'm not putting these in because they uh, hold the filter. This bracket holds in our temp sensor and it goes in that little groove right there. ready to go in. magnets go inside these little tabs it keeps them from getting crushed this 
our pin bolts, 10 millimeters. screwdriver get in here in the seal and let me pop that out clean this up it's rusty sand it down a little bit up your seal. Let's get it started on there. Make sure it's up over the grooves. Have that little ridge there. Get you a socket that'll fit over. this on there and our speed sensors and mark mine they are the same on this one but I always mark them put them back where they came out of twelve millimeters on our speed sensors these are our neutral bolts neutral let's see let's park reverse neutral I think it was you know there's park reverse neutral okay there's a little you can see this there's a little indicator right here there's a line on this neutral switch you line those two up
plug for our neutral our speed sensor, our bolt, 10 millimeter. Finally done with this one.